We have Amar S. S. Lakshmi Narayan, the CEO of Tata Communications with us on the show. Thanks so much for taking time out. So the numbers in Q3 have been a big beat as compared to what the street was penciling in, in particular on the margin front, and that's largely owing to uh, Caleria. What really led to this surprise profitability? What were the synergy benefits and the underlying growth? Yeah, um, first of all, uh, I would like to call out in two separate tracks. I think last quarter we said that uh, our core business without the subsidiaries uh, was holding up at the 23% mark. Uh, we have uh, this quarter uh, improved further on that marginally. Uh, um, uh, the other point to call out is, uh, as you said, Calera. Um, we had planned a set of activities for delivering on all the synergy tracks, and we had just fast tracked some of the activities in the in the cost synergy track, uh, and so that we can um, take the benefit of some of the low hanging fruits uh, that were there. So I would say a combination of very disciplined execution on uh, the overall business, and particularly with respect to the the integration activity. And also on the switch, uh, some of the losses have been narrowed down sequentially. Uh, these are the ones that have contributed to uh, better margins. Right. Um, though Calera has turned out to be profitable, switch is still away from a beta break even, right? Firstly, but when do you expect switch to break even? And secondly, when will Calera profitability uh, and will it sustain, you think? Um, yeah, on the on the switch, as I said, it's narrowing down, and we are uh, on our path to to make it break even. So the execution of that is going very well. Uh, you know, so some of these cost synergies are, you know, there are some low hanging fruits that you can take out. Some of them will take uh, a longer time to execute, and we are executing on those. And the same thing will apply to Calera as well. Right. So I think we we have taken some of the um, immediate um, low hanging ones that we could. Uh, but there are uh, many more things to be done, including investment in Calera to uh, make the platform more intelligent. Um, uh, those are investments that we need to make. So we will be calibrating all of that and we will execute on, on all tracks because these integrations are complex. There are cost synergies, there are uh, sales and revenue synergies that we have to extract where there are you know, teams in some of their accounts they are not a Tatacom accounts. Uh, we have common accounts um, and uh, and vice versa as well. So we need to work on those. And ultimately, we need to bring all the product in the platform synergies and uh, integrate tightly, even culturally, So which all will take time. So you know, we have a very uh, a clear plan on executing all of this. We have a, a good set of uh, team and leadership uh, for these integration activities and, and for the units. So we will... We will execute in, uh, we'll be executing in all of those. And the data business as well, the organic revenue was flat on a sequential basis. How could we, should we look at this going forward? What kind of growth shall we pencil in? So the, the, the data growth uh, and especially the, the digital data, um, you know, historically, if you go back, the digital data uh, two years ago was in a, in a low single digit and the overall data growth was in a low single digit. Um, I think we came off that trajectory and started to grow in the in the double digit and our overall YTD um, uh, digital revenues are uh, still healthy given the, the the broader macro conditions and the slowness in the decision making um, process uh, internationally particularly. So given those circumstances, we are quite happy with uh, uh, the, the kind of growth that we have seen. Uh, but in the medium to long term, we believe with all the investments we have made in across all our portfolio of the digital fabric, you know, whether it's the connected infrastructure or the next gen connectivity. And next gen connectivity, for example, is uh, is well over thirty percent um, uh, in uh, in YTD basis. So um, so there are pockets of these which are doing very well. Uh, we just need to make sure that uh, as the conditions improve, we continue to participate. Uh, in more number of opportunities, which is why we increased our footprint and uh, and sales force in the markets. And we'll continue to uh, do that and participate more. And when the conditions improve and the decisions get taken, we will be there to reap those benefits. 
So you think you'll clock uh, at least double digit a growth rate over the medium term? Um, that's what we are aiming for. And I think the YTD growth, uh, as I called out, is uh, is in double digits. Uh, combining with, uh, you know, the switch and Calera, definitely double digits. Okay. On margins, we've seen a slide from 26% to now 20%. I know you had prepared us for this drop on account of the acquisition impact. But now going forward, how do you see the recovery in margins? And where do you see FI25 margins uh, to come in at? Any range that you could give us? Um, I don't want to give an FY25 range, but uh, we have said that, uh, you know, we want to be in the 23 to 25% uh, EBITDA range. Um, and there's no reason to uh, to deviate from that. Um, you know, the I explained in the past that the reasons for the drop in margins, and, and as you said, we, you know, we had prepared the market because it's well in line with our strategy. As we increase our digital portfolio, uh, compared to the core connectivity, which had a high EBITDA margin, the digital portfolio has uh, a lower EBITDA margin, but with lesser capex intensity. Um, and and because of the revenue mix, we are seeing this effect of uh, the margin fall. Uh, but each of the digital portfolio uh, and each of the digital products have a glide path that will take us, uh, which will you know leverage the the operating leverage and the investments that we've made. And as they improve, we will get back to the 23 to 24 percent. Um, and that is what we've said that we will do that in the, in the medium term. And the cash conversion, that's weakened in the past couple of quarters, and that is driving your net debt higher compared to the acquisition cost. Is this something that's worrying for you? Is it because of the delayed decision making maybe, or perhaps the delayed payment from the customer side that this can be attributed to? No, no I don't think there's any... Uh late payments and we don't have any concerns on that um, the uh, the cash conversion uh, is a is a is a factor of uh, you know largely two things one is uh, the EBITDA uh, to uh, the PAT levels uh, one is the effective interest rates are going up with, uh, with overall debt levels going up and that is a factor and uh, the second is uh, we also had some um, other income, uh, like the tax returns and others that we had, which uh, helped us to improve the path in the past. Uh, but on a on a recurring basis, uh, we don't have any concerns on where we are and where we need to be. All right. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out. Good to have you on board, understanding a little bit more about the quarter gone by.